Well, think about this. Think about, um, you know, the transition from standard transmissions to automatics, you know, or some form of, you know, there's still standard transmissions, but you don't have to shift them. You don't need a clutch. What brings more money today? What is way more desirable to the point of sometimes double or triple the money of a paddle shift? But the baby boom has driven every market since they were babies. You know, it drove the tennis market when we were kids. It drove the golf market. It, it's driven every single market because it's such a big part of the population. So does that stand to reason that in 15 years those cars are going to start coming down in value? I think generally cars that are a regular Mustang coupe, yes, absolutely. Um kind of like the difference between a Model A and a Duesenberg. Model A's are less money than they've ever been or the same money that they've been for the last 30 years because, you know, the guy that remembered those cars new is long gone. But Duesenbergs have transcended, you know, the, the guy or the demographic and, and guys my age you know, I have buddies and customers that love the look of it. It's a piece of art to them. There's there's no, you know, nostalgic reason that they want it. They didn't, they weren't around when that car was out. It's purely, we love it for an art form. Okay, so let me switch gears on you, go in a different direction. Modern cars. Uh, yeah, you are known for classic cars, but if I were to go through the showroom and look on your inventory online, you have some modern cars, like we saw Skyline down there. Sure. You just sold the last generation Camaro, made a couple of bucks on that one. How much of an impact is this, I don't want to call it a renaissance, but maybe the last hurrah of modern muscle cars, CT5V Blackwing, uh, the last of the, you know, the ZL1 kind of stuff, uh, Z06, meaning no electrification in that car. Next generation will have electrification. How much of an impact is that? You said Z06. You're an American. Well, I'm sitting in Canada. Right? Oh, jeez. And I lived in Germany. <laughs> I'm um, trying to make you feel comfortable. No, there we go. Yeah. There we go. The. Uh, Do you know they put bacon on my Caesar salad yesterday? I was offended. Apparently, that's a thing in Canada. Every Caesar salad has bacon. Ugh, no, it doesn't. Just in Canada. It's, Just, a terri- it's a terrible thing. So I think the thing was anchovies or bacon? It's anchovies, yes. Bacon? No, I get it. And I mean, a, a great Caesar salad has anchovies. But I think that, you know, you can't go wrong with a little bacon on there. And a lot of guys don't like the stinky little fish. Oh, well, anyway, back to the <laughs> You don't know what you're talking about with salads. <laughs> I enjoy them both, so I Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so muscle cars. Yeah. How much of an impact is that having, this resurgence of these amazing cars? 700-horsepower Cadillac, uh, 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 a new Mustang. Literally a month from today, you and I are going to see a new Mustang. And I think we're at the pinnacle of muscle cars today, you know, for the exact reasons you said. Everything has 700 horsepower. Everything handles great. Everything looks great. You know, you have all the creature comforts, Bluetooth. Like, it does everything for you and does it extremely well. So I think we're at the peak of the mus- the new muscle car era. And it's ironic. It's not going to be insurance. It's not going to be even gas prices, even though they're crazy. And it's, it's not going to be any of those things that take it down. What's going to take it down is electric cars is it fair to say that they are in competition with some of the money for these classic muscle cars absolutely and i think that uh i'm not sure that they necessarily have paid their dues especially brand new cars it seems like you can go in and order any brand new car whether it's a you know a new z06 corvette if you can get one or right or a demon when you could get one a couple years ago or anything that was the hot ticket um and you instantly made money on it and i think and it's the same thing with european cars whether it's ferrari or porsche i mean there's you know a half dozen models that you can instantly make money when i go back cars that 
had a big lift on him immediately. Historically, that lift was short-lived for the guy that wanted to be the first guy on the block to own it. And usually within a year, they go down to list or below list. And that hasn't happened in a few years, and part of that is because of the shortage. So it'll be interesting to see when you know, car shortage in general stops, chip shortages stop, what happens to those cars. And we even saw it a little bit, you know, Porsche's GT3 RSs a couple years back, they went crazy, they pulled back below what they were at, and now they're back up again, you know, above what list price was back then. But as we transition and push to EVs, do you see that, making these cars that are now going to become unobtainium because they're no longer available or classic muscle cars more valuable or is it going to be like that old lee majors movie where he had to drive to radio free california to be able to drive a car again mm -hmm. i you know no, i i i think that it's going to definitely make muscle and gas powered cars more desirable okay so with that that means we all have to go out and buy ct5 v blackwood manuals that's what we're doing. Well, think about this. Think about, um, you know, the transition from standard transmissions to automatics, you know, or some form of, you know, there's still standard transmissions, but you don't have to shift them. You don't need a clutch. What brings more money today? What is way more desirable to the point of sometimes double or triple the money of a paddle shift? But I think there's a bunch we've missed, so I think we look to the audience to kind of fill in the blanks there. Because there's stuff that you and I, like the Skyline downstairs, I think that's going to continue to go up in value. Maybe not a muscle car, Japanese muscle car at that, but I think that's a good example. That's what I want to see other opportunities. So let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, we do need to provide a little bit behind the scenes of this gentleman here. Uh, so you went out to Pebble Beach. You won an award. You bought a couple cars. And you went racing. Which cars did you buy? Um, we bought a 918 uh, for a customer of ours. What color? Silver. Silver car, Wysock. Uh, yeah. Stunning car. Yeah. Well, what are those cars worth now? Um... I mean, depending on mileage and that, somewhere between one six, two million, you know, uh, high milers are obviously at the lower end, and really low mileage stuff is at that's the higher high end. High mileage car. What's, what's well, that? that, that's an interesting question because uh, mileage makes a big difference these days. And you know, if you take even a four GT, if it's over ten thousand miles, it's huge miles. If it's between five and ten, it's reasonable. If it's 2,500 to five, you know, it starts becoming collectible, but you yeah. can still enjoy it. And then you have under a thousand, then you have under the hundred mile mark, which brings a big premium again. Yeah, but you can't drive that car. In, in a, that's the interesting dilemma, is we get people all the time talking about how usable these new cars are. You know, they do everything well, you can drive them, and it's shocking how many people never drive them. But their rationale for buying a new car over an old car is its drivability. That is a crime. And I remember, actually, that I knew the guy who was working for Porsche when you expressed an interest in buying one of those. They sent him and the car to you, or you, they flew you to him, and he was the one that demonstrated the car for you. And back then, they, they actually didn't, they weren't able to sell all of them right away. Mm -hmm. They only sold half of them right away, and they really had to push them to sell. Anyway. Until we see you in the next episode, bish beta. <laughs>